Coach Cassetta. All right, welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's uh, episode of the college, where we'll feature Dan Weinberg, seasoned college regular partner and librarian, who will tell us all about food and water tonight. There are basically two rules of the College of Complexes. One is one fool at a time, and the second one is no personal attacks. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. First, there's a little bit of announcements period. Then we'll let our speaker, Dan Weinberg, speak for up to about an hour. And then we'll have questions and answers with Dan. And then we'll each have our uh, our say on our infamous rebuttal period. We generally finish up about 9 o'clock. But since we're on Zoom, we do have a little bit of leeway. So with that, uh, Charlie, if you want to get the announcements started, go ahead. OK, welcome, everyone, to meeting number 3,655 of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. As always, I want to remind everyone that we have an email group uh, on Google, which you are invited to sign up for. Instructions at the top page of our website to send the blank email to there to join. We also have a Yahoo group. Uh, you get one or two mailings a week, not heavy traffic. So I highly recommend you subscribe to either one of those or both of them. Okay. Okay. Although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our 12, count them, 12 upcoming programs. On March the 12th, there's been a program change. And Stansfield Smith will be talking about how the U.S. He claims the U.S. provoked the war in the Ukraine. And, and they should get out. So they, the top Ukraine's gonna be all over the map uh, on the 12th. Uh, on March the 19th, uh, we're gonna have D Knight who wrote a memoir of his assorted activities, very interesting activities on various causes. And he has issued as well a manifesto which you're welcome to take a look at on the website. On March the 20th, 26th, uh, Jeanne Lee will be joining us. And she maintains that there is a uh, uh, yin yang dynamism operating in the universe, including the college, I guess. Okay, moving on into April, uh, April the 2nd. The Libertarian Party will be back to uh, discuss their positions and they have a candidate for Attorney General, Daniel Robin. So April the 2nd. Uh, now we begin our Earth Month series of programs. Four programs. This is cool, man. Four programs. Earth Day speaker. <laughs> April the 9th. The One Earth Collective, a Chicago-based organization, will be telling, telling us about their many activities to end climate change. On April the 16th, a, this should be interesting, there's a lot of interest in hydrogen as to get, get us off the carbon economy. So uh, I know railroads are doing it and trucks and so forth. Um, on April the 23rd, we're going to host the Illinois Green Party, the candidates for the Water Metropolitan uh, District. Now, I believe they've already got enough signatures. Last I was at a meeting, well enough signatures to be on the ballot. So they're two exciting candidates. We'll tell you why you should join and vote and work for the Green Party. Okay, uh, and on April the 30th, I'll be looking at the issue of forest and the native habitat that we need to preserve. I'm working hard on this, so I appreciate everyone in attendance, mandatory attendance. Yeah. On, okay, transitioning into May, uh, an organization to which I am a full-fledged member in good standing. The IWW, the Wobblies, 
will be here for putting together an exciting program. They've been organizing Starbucks workers across the country, employees of Starbucks. So a report from them, our special May Day speaker. On, um, let's see, then we go to uh, May the 14th, the Truth Brigade will be here. They've got an interesting approach for you to filter what is true and what is false. I know a lot of you have a problem doing that on your own. So they want to help you out to determine what is true and what is false. Yeah, I, know. I can do it right away. Yeah, I know. Um, on May the 21st, uh, Stanfield Smith will be <laughs> returning and he maintains that Trump is not a fascist and didn't try to attempt to coup and just is a real nice guy. So we'll see what he has to say about that. On May the 28th, this is an interesting program. The uh, anti-vaxxers and so forth are showing up at school board meetings, disrupting meetings. And so we'll talk about efforts by parents to counter what they believe to be disinformation. The next open dates, June 4, 11, 18, 25. Okay, Tim, that's pretty good for right now. Everyone, good to see you here and take it away. Is there anybody else who's got an announcement for the good of the order or the clubs here? If not, we can uh, get uh, Dan to uh, start his speech. And uh, Dan, if you're ready, uh, unmute and uh, go ahead and share your screen and get started. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, my name is Dan Weinberg. I'm a semi-retired librarian and a gardener, and I'm a fan of, fa of farms. I've been called a farm fan. <clears throat> so the LA Water Report, which uh, I can show. This LA Water Report 2040. Can you see that? Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, this report is a report from 2020, two years ago. And it's basically saying how the water in LA needs to be fixed. Uh, the Colorado River is being reduced by 10% this year. So, so uh, LA needs to find some other water. They have a 400 mile aqueduct from Northern California coming, coming all the way south. And the movie, <coughs> chi the movie Chinatown shows somewhat, somewhat of that, how uh, the water from the Owens Valley was taken. Changes in laws which govern the use of LA water. Uh, were made in the 1990s. And agriculture has been using 80% of the water in California for, for the last 100 years. Okay, stop sharing. How do I stop, How do I stop sharing? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll stop you, Dan. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay you All got right. it. All right, good. All right, so uh, let's go to the PowerPoint. I'll share again. Okay. PowerPoint. There you go. And then uh, it's at the view, bu view button at the top near the left. And then uh, put a full s slideshow and then you use okay. your space bar to advance. Okay. So Thomas Jefferson said, civilization itself rests upon the soil. It 
hit your space, hit your space bar. There. Okay. Abraham Lincoln said before long, the most beautiful, most valuable of the arts will be deriving subsistence from the smallest area of soil. No community whose every member possesses this art can ever be the victim of oppression. A nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. That's Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And Henry Kissinger in 1970 said, who controls the food supply controls the people. Who controls the energy can control whole continents. Who controls money can control the world. This was before the World Trade Organization and the uh, and uh, the other thing, the other World World Bank, which were both started in the 1940s. And Wendell Berry, who's a poet and a farmer said, the soil is the great connector <clears throat> of our lives. The source and destination, uh, the source and destination of all, of all. Hmm. The reason we are in Iraq is to plant the seeds of democracy so they flourish there and spread to the entire region of author authoritarianism. That's George Bush. And when you sell real weapons, you control armies. When you control food, you control society. But when you control seed, you control life. So soil is basically the top, the top uh, part of soil is the O horizon, which is basically sand or clay or organic material. But there's also, there should be space and air in soil. So when I'm gardening, I sometimes, I, I would, this year in April, next month, I'm going to be putting uh, food scraps, fruits and vegetable scraps, and uh, different things into the soil to feed the microbes that are in the soil. I don't want to use any uh, nitrogen or fake fertilizer, because I, I think the, the microbes are like our, like our stomachs, actually. The biome in the soil is the same as the biome in our stomachs, mm -hmm. and we want to feed that. We don't want to give uh, fake fertilizer. And actually, fertilizer, talking about fertilizer, fertilizer was started in the 1880s, well, 1830s, actually. But uh, I'll get back to that later. So the A horizon is the surface soil, topsoil, which has a lot of the little microbes and for, uh, earthworms. And the E horizon, you got the B horizon, the C horizon. I got a video to show. Uh, Let's see. It's a quick video about soil. If you don't have the knowledge that you can positively change or impact something, then you don't have hope. The Soil Health Academy is a school that's built on the right premise. The school I went to taught me control, force it with my tools, tillage, fertilizers, chemicals. This school teaches you Mimic it, nurture it, understand its synergies and its complementaries. Understand how it works. You know, one of the real joys I get is seeing a young producer who gets it. There's young producers now that have taken their operation further in five years than I did in 25 because they're applying these principles. Uh, my name is Christian and uh, I'm from South Africa. My name is Aaron Lang, I'm from uh, Trenton, Ontario, Canada. And my husband and I just bought a farm in Maine. Um, I'm so glad that the soil guys uh, like Ray and, 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 and Gabe and being actually doing this in America. And you know, I want to go and take it back to South Africa. That's what I want to do. Do you feel like you're on an island and it's a very small portion of the farming community that's starting to move this way so just to have that 
peer support, that means a lot. I've done my homework. Um, but there's something about hearing somebody talk about it that's sinking in a deeper level. And there are new revelations and insights that are coming up just from being face to face with people or when a question comes up to be able to ask like right in that moment. The more aggregate, the more poor space. Coming to a class like this, I feel like I start to identify like, hey, this is how you make soil healthy. Uh, I think we all have the same common goal. But, uh, you know, as far as soil health, but, but coming from different backgrounds, hearing different people from, from uh, row crop to uh, different livestock producers, uh, it's really, really, really been enlightening. The one thing that I want our students to go away with from our academies is hope so that they understand that they actually can do something differently and not only make more money, far more money from their operations, but significantly improve the quality of life and significantly improve the ecosystem around them. When I was in a conventional, commoditized, industrial mindset, I used to wake up every morning and try to decide, what am I going to kill them? Is it going to be a weed? Is it going to be a pest? Is it going to be a fungal disease? I'm going to kill something. Now today, I wake up every morning trying to decide, how do I get more life on my operation? Okay, so this is uh, a story about the Soil Health Academy. And it's a very, like one person said, it's a minority opinion. There are people, 90% or more of farms use pesticide, use mm -hmm. fungicide, mm -hmm. use uh, fertilizer. They don't use manure, cow, cow manure. They don't use goat manure. They don't use chicken manure. They use uh, nitrogen that's sold by the chemical companies. Actually, um, sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid and cyanide were used as uh, pesticide in the early 1900s. And so that, that's basically poison. And so you're poisoning the land while you should be building it up. And that's what the, the, the Soil Health Academy does. I was gonna to go to Rodale. They have a, uh, in Iowa, Marion, Iowa, outside Cedar, Cedar Rapids. And uh, I didn't get to go there, but I might go to the, the Rodale farm in Pennsylvania They've been having, they have a natural farm and they uh, actually grow with pesticide one field and right next to it, a field with no pesticide. And they figured out after 40 years of doing this that they can grow the same amount of corn or wheat or soybeans without pesticide as with pesticide. And, you know, so in 1990, 800 million pounds of pesticide was used by farmers. And that's just, that's just terrible. That just makes me sick. Now, every time I go to the store, I go to buy vegetables. And of course, there's going to be glyphosate in there. There's going to be Roundup in all the vegetables. But, you know, what can you do? People can spend a lot of money and buy natural food, but that is impossible for all people because farmers markets aren't every day of every week. And they're, unless you're next, you live next to a farm, you're not gonna get fresh food. So I've had a local, I've had a four by eight, four foot by eight foot raised bed uh, community garden for about five of the last 20 years. And I plan to have one in April. I grow tomatoes and herbs, and there are about a hundred raised beds that anybody can use for a fee. Uh, the Peterson Garden Project is a good project, and I'll be putting the, like I said before, leaves and vegetables, 
and fruit scraps into the soil to feed those bacteria because they should be fed just like my stomach should be fed. And that's the truth. Let's pick up. So I, I've gone to the historic Wagner farm that's in Glenview and uh, a few times and it's surrounded by suburban houses and they're about 18 acres and six cows, two horses and about 20 chickens. And the Glenview Park Department, uh, they run that. It's, it is 18 acres. So they grow a lot of vegetables in the summer and they sell eggs. And they're members of the Cook County Farm Bureau as I am. And the Farm Bureau has many, has over 170 Cook County farms that are active today. And if people want it, they can uh, connect to these farms and get a community supported agriculture uh, subscription. And every week they'll send you, they'll give you fresh vegetables and fresh meats, fresh uh, food, basically for a price. Just uh, connect to your local Cook County Farm Bureau and you can find fresh food anywhere, anytime. Even in the winter, they deliver. They deliver potatoes and things like that. And some things from Florida and California that are, that are uh, organic. Uh, there's another farm in Chicago called the Glen Art Farm. It's by Lake Street in Austin by Oak Park in the Austin neighborhood. It's uh, 5749 West Midway Park and they have about six goats. <coughs> and about 20 chickens. And they start selling goat milk this month actually for $18 a gallon, but you have to bring a container there because they don't have containers. You have to bring ice because it has to be cold. Hmm. $18, wow. $18 a gallon. Yeah, it's, <laughs> but it's totally natural. No, homo they didn't homogenize it. It's straight from the goat. <laughs> so you have to be strong. You can't eat this. Can't keep drinking your regular milk from the store. Got to get okay. it from a farm. I mean, where does all our food come from? A farm or soil? Anyways, anyways. So mm -hmm. what goes in the soil is important. If a gardener or farmer uses road Roundup to kill the weeds, this might be affecting the garden or the farmer. There are... Uh, many thousands of court cases against Monsanto for, for injuring people. And uh, actually when Bayer bought Monsanto, they put aside $11 billion to pay the court cases because they're planning on paying the court cases. Now, uh, Time for a poem. El this is Elk Trails by Gary Snyder. I have followed narrow twisting ridges, sharp top and jagged as a broken crosscut saw across the roof of all the elk world on one ancient wandering trail, cut, cutting crazily across rocks and dust and snow, gently slanting through high meadows rich with the scent of lupine, rich with the smell of elk dung, rich with the scent of short-lived dainty alpine flowers. And from the ridge tops, I have followed you. So uh, okay, that's a poem by Gary Snyder, who's still alive after about 90 years. So about two years ago, I quit eating sugar, added sugar, or mostly. I quit eating sweet rolls. I quit eating candy. 
and Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. I quit five years ago. Coca-Cola. Sprite. Sprite. I quit. Canada Dry. I quit. But I today I bought some Ben and Jerry's ice cream. So that has about 78 grams of sugar in it. So I'm making up for the last two years. It's good stuff. But I won't eat it again for at least a month or two. I promise. But I have survived. I eat more meat and vegetables now, I think. And sometimes I buy food at a farmer's market, which is ridiculously expensive. It's $12 for a, a loaf of bread. But I mean, it's a pound and a half of bread. It's a lot of bread. It's very good bread, but it, it's got olives in it. Right. It's from Evanston, Fred's be Breads. Mm. Very good. And uh, they have a, actually, they have a farmer's market at the Emanuel Lutheran Church in Evanston. They had it today, and they'll have it every two weeks in the, for the next, next year. They had it during the winter also, in December and January. <clears throat> Another factor in food is GMOs. Mm -hmm. GMOs is genetically modified organisms. And there was this case, that Diamond versus Chak Chakrabarti in 1980. It was a, went to the Supreme Court. And Diamond was a commissioner of the of the Patents and Trademarks Commission. And Chakrabarti was a inventor, worked for General Electric. And Chakrabarti invented a bacteria that ate, ate uh, oil. So from oil spills, it could eat the oil. So he wanted to patent it. And the person in the patent office said, no, According to the patent rules, no living thing could be patented. But the Supreme Court, including Lewis Powell, voted for the, for the okay to patent a living thing, the bacteria. So more than 10,000 things have been patented now. And, uh, and that's... That's the truth. And Monsanto owns a lot of patents. Syngenta is another corporation that owns patents. And uh, Pioneer Hybrid owns a lot of patents. In Europe, they voted, they have not, they have voted against accepting GMO plants. But in America, something like 90% of the corn, 90% of the soybeans, and 90% of the wheat is GMO and most of that GMO gets fed to cows and pigs and chickens in large operations called CAFOs, confined animal feeding operations, which are mostly in Nebraska and Kansas. And they're quite sick places. They're very full of antibiotics 80% of antibiotics are fed to animals. And these animals are constantly getting sick because there's so many, there are 10,000 in one area. And that's food from, for McDonald's. McDonald's gets a lot of their food from CAFOs, I think. And uh, if the government was doing its job with regulation, they wouldn't uh, allow these CAFOs to exist. They have large deposits of cow manure, cow manure and, and they just sit there and, and pollute the land, pollute the water, and it's just criminal what they're doing. Farmers who use GMOs, if I was a farmer and I used GMOs, I would have to pay a fee to Monsanto or the patent owner to use the seed. And this is true all over the world. Um, 
corporations like uh, I, I'd like to show, uh, share my screen and show something. Uh, right, where's my... Okay. So this is a this is a letter from the uh, Archer Daniels Midland CEO, Juan Juan uh, Juan Luciano, and he says. He told me that a Archer Daniels Midland makes about 8 billion pounds of high fructose corn syrup every year. And they buy most of their corn from local farmers. And uh, so 8 billion pounds of, of corn syrup is quite a lot of corn syrup, I think. And of course they sell it to canned vegetables, canned, canned fruits and vegetables. And so it gets into all our food. They do a good job of selling it. Um, as I was saying, the food at a farmer's market is more expensive. Like a one and a half pound loaf of bread costs $12. In a supermarket, it might cost three or $4. But there will be high fructose corn syrup in that bread in the supermarket. Vegetables are two or three times as expensive in a grocery store as in a grocery store, but you are getting fresher, non-GMO, non-pesticide food. <clears throat> Here's a, a poem by Charles Simic, Simich from this book called The Lunatic. The title of the poem is called Bare Trees. One of my thoughts eloped with a leaf. The wind blew off a tree with two crows setting forth from another in hot pursuit across the bleak landscape like a frantic father with a minister in tow. So soil is very important to any society. And uh, a lot of ancient societies collapsed because of they couldn't grow any more food. And that's tough. There have been riots in many countries recently, over 50 countries recently. Uh, yeah. All food ch changes the sugar in the stomach. It's not quite true. Glucose can be digested, which is from fruits and vegetables, but, but fructose, which is from high fructose corn syrup, and oranges have fructose, but fructose can't be digested by the liver. So Coke, Pepsi, and uh, Coke, Pepsi, and uh, candy, as much high fructose corn syrup like a Archer Daniels Midland makes. And this is made into fat by the body. So because the liver can't, can't digest it. So the liver becomes fat, the, the person gains weight and might get diabetes. And that's a problem. And actually 10% of America has diabetes. Now, if 10% of America has diabetes, isn't that a isn't that a pandemic? That sounds like a pandemic to me. And we should be focusing on that and not only on the flu, the, uh, the virus, I think. And uh, I have something else by Wendell Berry. He said, science can teach us and help us to resist death, but it can't teach us to prepare for death or to die well. I think I mean it means 
all the technology in the world isn't can't can't pick a tomato, can't pick a peach, can't pick apples. All the technology you need people to do that, and you also need people to to plant soil that is healthy, like people should be healthy. Mm -hmm. So that's about all I got. Thank you. All right, uh, let, I'd like to now entertain questions for, uh, um, for uh, you know, our, our speaker, Dan, tonight. So whoever would like to go first, please go ahead. Uh, have you heard of, um, uh, you, you've uh, spoken a lot about soil and farming. Have you heard of the story of uh, Hunzaland, H-U-N-Z-A-L-A-N-D? I believe it's uh, uh, near China or Tibet or somewhere. Um, uh, many, many decades ago, Art Linkletter uh, uh, on his program had a guy, an optometrist who uh, sent uh, the optometrist to Hunzaland to look at their farming and their soil. Uh, I can't remember the details, but have you ever heard of Hunzaland? No, I, I've never heard of Hunza Land. No. Okay. All right. Bob how, do you, how, do you, how do you spell that? H U N Z A L A N D. I'll try to put it in the chat. Okay. okay. All right, Bob Matter, you were, I guess you had your hand up. You're next if you're ready. Yeah, Dan. Um, I was here in these types of speeches. This comment that you know, if you grow your own food or whatever, you're, it's an organic farm, but it's non-GMO. But you know, everybody says that they imply that GMO food is somehow unsafe. Uh, can you point me to any scientific studies that show that GMO food is unsafe? That's my first question. My second question is. Uh, are cat turds a good source of fertilizer for, for gardens? Well, I'll take your second question first. Any kind of turd, human turd, human feces is good for, uh, and urine is good fertilizer. I'm serious. Cat, anything, cat, dog, people, cow, horse, goat, chicken, anything, because it comes from the body. And it's natural, as they say. And, uh, you know, it's good. Your, what was your first question? I forgot. Can you, can you point oh, GMOs, to any GMOs. Okay, I'll yeah, tell you. Sure, there, there's GMOs, okay, okay. You guys always say, you always point to GMO foods is like GMO. being a, you know, something that's non-GMO, you always point to it like it's healthy or an advantage or right, something. Right, right, right. Okay, first of all, let's see, where will I start? Okay, GMOs, to test your premise that GMO is good, GMO is bad. First of all, you would have to have people together in a hospital, probably in a room or in an in a area to test them. First of all, they probably ate G GMO food their first 20 years. Let's say they're, they're college students. They're 20 years old, so they've been eating GMO all their life, 20 years. Secondly, you have to, I mean, it's impossible to test. You got to keep them, what, are you going to keep them prisoner for 20 years and make sure they, you feed some GMO and some not GMO? It's, it's just impossible to make a scientific study of it. So, right, it's impossible to true. prove. Yes, it is. It's impossible to prove, almost, unless you're you almost. Know, it's it's it is impossible. I would say it is impossible to prove or disprove if GMOs cause problems. But there is a lady, uh, Sharon Schwartz or some not Schwartz Scherner. Anyway, it's a, with the S. She wrote a book about um, <laughs> sexual. Uh, measurements and they're just going the boys and girls 
measurements are, are getting closer together. And so the definition of a boy and a girl is changing. Now, is that because of pollution? Is it because of GMOs? It's impossible to find out why, but I'm sure the college of complexes will figure out why and have a theory. Now, certainly they could uh, test mice and like feed mice, one group of mice a diet of GMO corn and another group well, of mice have. a diet of uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. organic corn. They and have done that. If what, whether one set of mice gets right. can't. Right. Okay. And what did it show? It showed GMOs no got them people. It? No, it showed GMOs got people, got mice sick. Where yeah, really? did you find that study? Oh. I, <laughs> well, wait, there are, I'm sure Monsanto and Syngenta <laughs> and Bayer, who now owns Monsanto, I'm sure they funded a lot of studies that say GMOs are A-OK. -okay. But there are other studies that Monsanto tried to dis destroy and uh, hide that say GMOs are bad. But I mean, you know, you can believe what you want to believe. It's a free country, free world. Sorry, what do you mean by the definition of a boy and a girl is changing? Um, like I'm there's confused. a measurement, there's a measurement between two parts of the body and it's in boys, it's bigger and girls, it's smaller and it's just becoming closer together. That's all. The measurement is becoming less uh, different. So, I mean, it's a sexual thing, but I mean, also uh, GMO uh, Monsanto uh some of their suits against i mean some of the suits against monsanto said that uh pregnancies and uh were brought were different more difficult and children had more cancer and things like that with gmos okay thanks up. Jim? Yeah. Who's next? Char Go ahead, Charlie. Yes, Dan. I, I often I look for internal contradictions here. You tell us that you were in Rodale and they had two identical plots to, of, cro of crops and they each produced it was conventional and the organic and each produced an equal amount of food. And then you come along a few minutes later and tell me organic food costs 10 times more. Well, if, if it's producing the same amount of food, what explanation do you have for an increase of 10 times more in cost? First of all, it's not 10 times. I mean, $12, $12 for a a loaf of a big loaf, a pound and a half, instead of four dollars or five dollars. The cost little, should be the not, same. If the two plots in your assertion were producing identical amounts of food, there should be no change in price whatsoever. Okay, first of all, people it, uh, to get rid of weeds in a farm plant farm plot of acres, people, people have to remove the, the weeds. You can't spray Roundup or Paraquat or Nardane. You have to get high, hire people to pull the weeds. Secondly, uh, but actually, if you saw on that, and then what was your question? Why oh, the, do you the present price, invalid the price. comparisons then? Price. It's an invalid Actually, comparison. They're not identical. You, when you do any kind of scientific test, and science. that's what you're alleging, basic science. science. Now you're saying all sorts of special activities were done to one side, well, which are if, costly. So they're okay. not identical plots. Right. Okay, but 
I mean, no cow manure has been sued by a farmer. No cow has been sued by a farmer for giving them cancer. No cow or no chicken has been sickened and gotten cancer, non-Hodgkin's cancer from cow manure, while people have gotten cancer from Monsanto fertilizer and pesticide. So all I'm saying is that it's better, it's better, it's more healthy, person might live longer if you don't eat uh, pesticide laden food. That's Follow up saying. question, please. Yes. There are, I read and I did a quick search during the week. There is no nutritional advantage to organically grown food. As a matter of fact, organically grown food may make you, may increase the possibility that you get exposure to, to Ill, uh, diseases wow. uh, by specifically, um, uh, what do you call it? The um, uh, E. coli that the, in an organic field, I know this, uh, these things thrive because there's nothing to stop them. And that's why you, uh, you have to wash your food. I mean, but, and all you can do, all you have to do is wash your food. Right, but they they do that at Jewel and they wash lettuce. Every inspector comes and they do that naturally all the time. With every then again, and it's more dangerous for my red to eat organic food, which I found rather contrary to everything you just said. Where, where was this a... Uh, uh, funded Country by Living. Country Living magazine. Country Living. Okay. Country Living, the Farm Bureau, they're all supported by DuPont, Dow, Bayer, uh, Pioneer Hybrid, Syngenta. They get money from chemical companies. So of course they're going to try to make make it look bad to grow to grow organically. I totally understand that. And on the other side is why is Monsanto, why is Bayer putting away $11 billion to pay for all their court cases? I mean, uh, there are reasons why Monsanto got sued. Right. I, can I jump in here too? Yeah, um, go ahead. One second, sued for what? For causing cancer for people who use round, Roundup. Right. That's people who spray it, man. That's right. And they, yeah. they sprayed it and they That's got the they people too. who you eat it. Can it. I didn't say they eat it. They sprayed That's it. people in the field. It, it gets on the food and it, it does get inside Listen, our food. The lawsuits are about people who have direct use of it on a daily basis. You know, a lot, you remember the farm workers, the farm workers who were here three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. Remember the farm workers? You know, my wife asked I don't really, question. I know about that. That's a, that's a workplace hazard. But I'm right. not and they don't say workplace. they don't say anything <laughs> about it. They said nothing about it. Yeah. Because you know what? They avoid the question. Because you know why? They don't want to get fired. Because if they get if they start saying they get sick. They'll get fired, period. But I'm not a farm worker. Well, okay. if I was a farm worker, right. if I well, was one, I, I, wouldn't be used, I wouldn't like it. Okay. So the lawsuits are not about their food giving people cancer. The lawsuits are about people working for them who have both. a workplace hazard. There's both. It's the same thing. You know, you can get no, it. No, it's not. No, this, it is not. Okay. Can I, this is my turn now, OK? I worked for an ad agency that advertised Roundup in <laughs> Pfizer in the 80s. I realized that I worked on a project testing GMOs for Monsanto, and we called the farmers. I find it interesting as a market researcher that they now, rather than survey people, you know, random sample and ask, you know, you got cancer, what kind of cancer, what do they attribute it to? they they now just say you know it's called choice theory they just say farmer is it more convenient for you 
to have GMO seeds, the pesticide built into the seed so that you don't have these boll weevils. And they go, yeah, I like it a lot better. It's a lot easier for me. And so they don't even measure the, the cancer. But if you look at the movie um, about the Teflon and the rivers, the, and the, that it's called Black Waters, I think, um, one Academy Award and all the cows have black mouth and dying, you know, because they drank the water that came off the Teflon. But, and that's the same thing with, there's a great movie on the other side, Big Little Farm, that shows how these people applied the principles that Dan's talking about. And just, it was all natural, all, you know, ecosystems. And it's so beautiful because you see the way that farm grows and the, when a fire comes in California, I, their farm doesn't get it. I don't, you know, it just grows naturally with, you know, the, the snakes and the wolves and the rats big and the little farm. <laughs> big really little farm. It's it. amazing movie that uh, the wife is a photographer and um, you know, they do this together. It, it's beautiful. Um, but it, I do know that uh, I, I had a, I kept looking into what is the deal with the GMO? Does it give me cancer? Because I, there, you're right. A lot of those studies are suppressed, but you see the same thing now with, as I'm looking at the genetic engineering at Fort Detrick, that what they are developing bio warfare, they develop germ warfare with the CRISPR technology and the biological right, right, right. things, right? And right, so right. that's genetic engineering, genetic right, technology. Right, right, Most right. of it's been done for, to kill people because it really is right, poison right. in, you know, uh, in, right. right? Okay. Okay. That's what can gave I say it. something, can I jump in here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number one, um, you're right. A lot of, well, like Zyklon B, which was killed Jews in the concentration, in the killing camps in Auschwitz, more mm -hmm. than a couple million. I mean, that was originally a pesticide in California. It was invented in, in not in Illinois, but in California. Mm -hmm. And the, the Germans took it and changed it a little bit. And it's Zyklon B. It was right. used as a pesticide. Right, so, um, for lice, to get the lice out of your hair too. Or, or look at yeah. Rachel Carson's book. It's very inspiring. There's a documentary on that. And the government yeah. tried to tried to suppress her. They, they basically killed her off, you know, but she got, she actually, they create cancer. There's germs, they know that, but that's down in, it's great. Dr. Mary's monkey shows how the American Cancer Society and the National Institute of Health and the WHO was developing cancer to kill off Castro. They want to really okay. great. Right, wait, wait, wait. You're, you're, you're gonna slip one more thing. Vaccines, you know. The yeah, Rockefeller Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, Rockefeller was a the trust busting. They busted his his uh, company, Standard Oil. So yeah. uh, Ida B. Wells, right? Or no, Ida yeah. Far Farbel, Tarbel. Uh huh. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, so, and then the, actually the State Department used the Rockefeller Foundation. <laughs> Can you turn off the heat, please? The turn off uh, Rockefeller Foundation for the State Department because the American government was very weak in foreign affairs and they thought that uh, Rockefeller Foundation could do a good job. But then later on, the Rockefeller Foundation used eugenics. They were big in eugenics and um, mm -hmm. racism right. theory. And some of them went to Germany and taught the German scientists at the, at the uh, institute there about racism, about eugenics. And actually some of the scientists in America would write letters to, to Hitler or to Goering or somebody and saying, complimenting them on, on the Nuremberg laws and you're taking good, so good care of the Jews. Uh, we wish we could do it. And these right. letters, these letters are in the Rockefeller Foundation. Anyways, so also- what in the world does that have to do? Right, well then, so I'm now- I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it, Charles. This is ridiculous. Yes, this oh. is theory. This is how they developed it. All right. Um, they, they, they developed, they developed okay, GMOs, right. actually. Oh, no. Actually, they developed oh, GMOs. All right. Margaret, let's get to your question now. Oh, okay? Ridiculous. 
Uh, I I personally am a strong believer in organic food. I'm a cancer survivor. I try to buy organic. And here in Dallas, it's not that much more expensive. Uh, and I, I don't know much about GMO. Uh, but I do have a question about uh, the use of hormones and antibiotics in these animals. I am a vegetarian. But many years ago, when I was doing volunteer work, and I want in a, an emergency contact, we had a speaker who said young girls are giving birth at Parkland as young as nine. Now, is that attributable? Uh, and of course, these are usually poor young girls. Is that attributable to their eating a lot of chicken whenever they can get some type of meat that's been laden? <laughs> what do you know about that, Diane? I, yeah. Yeah. I think I've heard it said because of sugar, actually. That's a good point too. Yeah, I think it's in milk to keep it from going bad. They or that's no, sugar, well, hormone. They, could be, or, they mm -hmm. could be drinking Coca Cola or Pepsi or oh, something. Okay. So, no, there's really? hormones. Or they could be eating. Cake. They mature earlier, girls. When I was a when I was a kid, I my mother would give me uh, a Nestle's Crunch, a glass of apple juice, and a Hostess Ho Hos whenever I was sick. So I was like addicted. I thought sickness was a great thing. It got me sugar. Free. Sugar. So Pam, I mean, could the, I the add pregnancy? The pregnancy thing could be because she's of sugar. done. Go ahead and get your question, Charlie. What's for I just Pam. wanted to answer this question. We had many years ago someone representing Moo, the milk outrage organization. Yeah. There is no no way to distinguish between regular milk and milk produced by animals with hormones. That's why when you go to the grocery store and they could not put things on the label that said this is, it implies that one product is better than another when you don't have any evidence that it is. Now I see, I forget they're using another thing like naturally, naturally made or something. But the Career Food and Drug Administration and the Truth in Advertising. So I don't know about this thing about having effect on young women, but they were never able to determine. That's why the, the movement never grew because the farmers were complaining the cows with hormones produced three or four times more milk and milk identical to milk from cows who had no hormones, that's all. I don't drink cow's milk, I drink almond milk. Charles switched to almond milk. <laughs> the, yeah, I've had uh, you know, regarding the lobbies, I saw a documentary last week on actually um, Duesberg, Peter Duesberg is the one that says there is no virus. Okay, he's this oh, birth yeah. professor and they shut him up. But Andy okay. Anderson given me, me the book. This is relevant. But they also, in the process of talking, said that they they commented on a law had come out. The lobbyists, the corporate lobbyists, said, "You're not allowed to. Um, we, you know, we're not going to require our businesses to have to label all this stuff because that'll make it hard for them to make a profit. And you know, so the, the corporate lobby." There is really the problem here. They, there's three documentaries on sugar. Just the sugar lobby made it against the law to print the studies that showed how, like, a, remember this kid, they, they, the water was dirty. So the Mexico, the, the mother feeds the kids Coke since an early age and their teeth fall out. And, you know, so you know that there's a cause and effect with what you put in your body. And, um, uh, but I have to say, Agent Orange, the documentary, Agent Orange versus um, the people. And they showed how they, you know, they get out of Vietnam. And so they, a woman spraying Agent Orange, which is Roundup, same thing all over the people in, in, in as, you know, the jungles of Vietnam. But they're spraying them all, all over California. And Luke couldn't believe it because why are they spraying it all over California? But that you show the sick people, and then the woman that's that's blowing the whistle on it, they burn down her house and kill kill her four kids right off. Can, you know? I, can I answer this question? Well, watch Jim? that documentary. Go ahead, Charlie. Then we'll go on to the we next. We had one. a speaker at the college from the Veterans Administration, 
The only people who had an issue with Agent Orange in Vietnam were the soldiers who had direct handling of it and, in the, and were engaged in spraying of it. Look they at had the no, babies. They Little were babies unable, are born. They were unable born. to you establish know? any any illness to Agent Orange in uh, the common combat soldier in Vietnam. Now that's a that's why All they this spoke. cancer coming out of there. They, they had no the Veterans Administration did not recognize. Well, yeah, they don't Agent recognize. Origin because farmer veterans were claiming, putting in all sorts of claims, and the VA was denying it. People were claiming all sorts of things attributable, like you. To Agent Orange. Something has just come okay. out this week with John Stewart. All right, all right, let's get back the to the VA has to recognize the cancer that caused, like from the from 9-11 and the firemen, you know, what you breathe will kill cancer. It gets into your blood, just and it the radiation and all it right. goes to the next generation. Ellen, and they is, can't have children. And that's what we're seeing with these vaccines, too. Okay, okay. Let's let's let it go there. I got a I got a question for you, Dan. And uh, you know, I just want to know what is wrong with something like this. This is perfectly good, nutritious food. It's from Gene and Jude's in River Grove, Illinois. And it's a great snack. Okay. Like true Chicago hot dog with fries. What's wrong with that? Food is a choice. You have a lot of choices in America. Yeah, and that, that's a good choice for fresh food. Well, if it's your choice, fine. You're you're an adult. You can choose what you want. See, there's no ketchup on there. But what's wrong with that choice? <laughs> I'm not it's saying it's wrong. It's your, it's your choice. It's not my choice, but your choice. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got a next question, please? Okay. I'll say I'll say something about GMOs. There's a, lab, a label law just started 22, January 22. Um, I'm not sure it's kind of vague. And people, I mean, if if GMOs are so great, why don't they say it in big letters on every GMO thing, like every box of GMO corn, corn or canned vegetables or canned fruit or or on, on corn or on apples, oranges, peaches, pears, plums. Why don't they say it? If they're so proud of GMOs and it's such great science, what are they why, aren't, why aren't they saying it's what, great? What they're not saying GMOs make better food. They don't make better apples. They make they a lot of apples. Why do they make GMOs then? If then why are not, they making GMOs? Claiming GMO is for protein quantity, quality. So, oh, it's not quality; it's quantity. Nutritional claims. Oh, so there are no nutritional claims. So why do they do it? Because of quantity. So do, yes. they just want to sell more. As a matter of fact, GMOs will be your solution to not using herbicides and pesticides. But I, I guess you didn't look that up. No, but that is using pesticide because that's what's in the GMO is pesticide. It's in there. So that's not not using pesticide. It's using pesticide. That's what a GMO I have is. Met, we had a speaker again on GMOs. And she could not establish at all, not one study, that GMOs were harmful. And I did a lot of I told you why. And she could not produce a study. I she told said you there why. Was one done possibly in France and gave us some conspiracy theory that this was, or the departments of agriculture. Well, if you want to think about it, if you want to think about it, if you don't want to think about why you can't set up a experiment, isolating a group you of people. You can use computers to do experiments. Where are you at, man? What? You can use all, you can use all sorts of specimens. Come on, I use rats in school, man. Yeah, I said that from GMOs, they got sick. Rats got sick. They, no, they, they did not. Those studies. No. They no. suppressed the studies. They no. did. 
Uh, you can find the studies in France. You can find the studies in school if it was a good school. Our speaker could Pfizer, you know, like has taken over the hospitals. Oh. I watched this whole documentary on all the cancer cures they've su suppressed actively over the years. Massimo Massumo is this documentary. And they, you know, they suppress them because there's a lot of money in cancer and, you know, radiation and chemotherapy, which actually the guy pointed out what kills people in AIDS is the AZT. You know, what kills people, it's this, the vaccines, you know, right? The, they make these things to create the problems. What's the name of the movie? Uh, which, the one about the cancer? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll get it. Just I'll okay. come back. Okay. Let me get okay. Mazimo, Mazuma. Hold on. <laughs> I think the burden of proof is on our speaker. Excuse me. When you make an assertion, the burden of proof is on you, Dan. Yeah. Dan, I you didn't know, say GMOs are bad. I just said pesticide is bad. So GMOs have pesticide built into them. So I don't I don't and think they're that great. It's it's they were made to be that way. Okay. And the thing is, I was I'm a researcher, I dug into this anthrax, Gulf War syndrome, which is a lot like Lyme disease, a lot like long COVID. The only tests I could find were on people in who had the anthrax vaccine who were in the Gulf War, who were coming down with that Gulf War syndrome, which is just like they can't get out of bed. They, you know, just wither away, kind of like AIDS. They're, it's neurologically impaired. The T cells can't handle the stuff. But also they're attacking T cells with CRISPR, which is really crazy, you know, but they, you know, the T cells, our, our body naturally should be able to fight a virus with a T cell. The T cell finds it, recognizes, remembers it, and kills it within a day, right? That's how it works. But the, it's crazy how they'll kill, kill T cells, or they make these, these manufactured lab made germs and vaccines and things that are the body, you know, can't kill. And so eventually uh, it burns itself out with autoimmune again, disorder. This is not a definition. This is not about vaccines. This is yeah, about, yeah uh, this is about genetic modified food, which is like he said, the pesticide is built into the seed and, and then that's what grows. And they, there's, you can't, it's hard to find the studies that show it because they've been suppressed. But All right, let me, let me say probably something. are evidence. All I right. put in, the, I put in the chat, the name of the church. It's in Evanston. It's a Emmanuel with an I, I-M-M-A-N-U-E-L. -M -M -E yeah. It's, it's, it's in Evanston, not in Chicago. This, this guy's name is Massimo Mazzucco, M-A-S-S-I-M-O, M-A-Z-Z-U-C-C-O. He's, this Spell is the one, one on um, the true history of marijuana. Okay. He also okay. has it on cancer and um, other things. What was his name again, Ellen? Massimo Mazzucco. M-A-Z-Z? Yeah. M-A-S-S-I-M-O is his first name. M A Z Z U C C O, Massimo Mazzucco. Was a, he was an Italian filmmaker, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, he makes really good documentaries. One on cancer, one on the New American Century, you know. And there's a lot of these on the same thing on COVID, on COVID land. All right, Dan. Right? Like to, okay, sure. Charles is next on this question. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, Dan. Uh... I'm going to be talking on April 30th on trees. And I know this for a long time that uh, certain trees, such as the redwoods, uh, are disease and pesticide resistance, which was achieved by nature. And if you can put that into any sort of, if you do any basic biology of GMOs, you transport those attributes to a plant. So don't tell me that this, this are, that's how you end up with more food. You don't want to, and you tell me, warn me against country collapsing if they don't have enough food. And then you come along and you want to reduce food production. And you want to, and you want to stop any method of research 
in the how to keep half people a country from collapsing. I'm a little bit at a loss here. Um, yeah. Here, here's the actual movie, Cancer, the Forbidden Cure. Let, let him answer, please. Okay, okay, I see it, Ellen. Um, I, I don't know, Charlie. I, I, you won't listen to what I say. So, <laughs> I think he well, is. I'm listening now. Oh, okay, good. If um, you can make plants, <laughs> everybody knows GMOs. Well, you can incul inculcate them with attributes to make them uh, uh, smarter, resistant. Smarter plants, yeah. Well, plants are inculcated with pesticides. You know, the re Rockefeller... The Redwoods have pesticide in them? That's yes. ridiculous. Yeah. Seeds yeah. have pesticide in them. Yeah, they or do. Or you could spray well, it on the ground. Have a pesticide. Until what do you, you think GMO means? Sprayed it. You sprayed yeah. around them. GMO Under means, well, they're pesticide resistant. Right. They, they're pesticide resistant. No, but bug actually, resistant. They're, they're pest resistant. You can put down a pesticide the old way, spray it, that'll kill you. Or more conveniently, it's genetically made into the seed. No, 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 no. Wait, let me, let me explain. So they're genetically modified because they're resistant to, to Roundup. They're Roundup resistant seeds. Yeah, they are. Oh, they're um, pesticide. They're not resistant to Roundup. They have Roundup when, built into no, them. No, no, no. Because when Roundup is sprayed on the field, these plants are resistant to Roundup. They won't get killed by Roundup because they're modified. So everything else that's not Roundup resistant will die, like all the weeds. It kills the weed. Roundup kills the weeds. There's, oh, yeah, there's herbicides but, but me, and there's pesticides. You're right. right. There's both, they don't, right? And they used to spray them on on the farms to kill the bugs and to kill the weeds. They do it now. They they use billion pounds, a billion pounds well, of Roundup. But then they year. developed a seed with the Roundup, with the pesticide integrated. No, into it's a, no, it's Roundup resistance in the seed. I'll look it up. Yeah, right yeah, look it up. Anyway, so <laughs> the Re on. Rockefeller Foundation had invented a seed that died after, well, no, what was it? It was called... Well, it, actually, they invented a seed with that killed sperm. So if if you ate the food, it would kill sperm in the man. Mm -hmm. Now this is called population control, and they they probably sold they didn't they they didn't uh, advertise it too much, but um, the book Seeds of Destruction. Right, right. If you Google seeds of destruction, William Ingall, Ingall, right, Ingall. Okay. and he said I could, I should share his because that's relevant to the, right. the vaccine stuff. Right, right. right. So they wanted the uh, Rockefeller Foundation wanted population control in third world countries like Pakistan, India, Russia, and uh, you know the the East, the Far East, uh, yeah. Philippines. That's that's the so they sold them. So they sold them these seeds, and right. we don't know what happened exactly. There was it, another seed called the Terminator. <laughs> Murder by injection. Ingdahl, it, right. right. This one is is Griffin is um, oh, is, Griffin. is is brilliant too. Um, uh, yeah. But it yeah. There's a book, Population Control, by Jim Mars, which is the only conclusion you can come to. But if you wanted, are they really trying oh. to kill off? Seven eighths of it, so they can. There's enough oil for them to keep be sustainable, and that seems to be the only conclusion these people can come to who've studied I think, it for years. Right, right. I think part of the reason to go to Russia, part of the thing with Ukraine, is so Russia will get weak, and America can take over Russia's oil. Right, a lot right. Of oil. They think there's they, there won't be enough oil for <laughs> the eight million people now, so they've you got know, to get down to half a billion. How this came yeah. down from uh -huh. discussing the food thing to going to vaccines? It's called an ecosystem, but there. What is the origin of this problem? Why would they be trying to kill us? Why you know? And um, there's got to be a motive, and that's what like, it's like a case. It's, it's Man, a state like crime against people. You know why else would they hey. be trying to kill us? Dan, I'd like to get your opinion of the Green Revolution. Okay, the Green Revolution. 
Yeah, you know what it is, right? It, yeah, it, it's by Dr. Vandana Shiva, uh, uh, activist, famous activist. She calls it the chemical revolution. It wasn't a green revolution. Basically, what it was was selling Roundup to countries, giving them GMO seeds, Roundup resistant seeds, and giving it, selling them Roundup. So the chemical companies made money. ADM made money. Cargill made money and the seed companies made money. And basically it was a American corporation project that was called the Green Revolution. That's what I think it was. Well, what about Norman Bolling? Yeah, Norman he was, he, he won a Nobel prize, peace prize or just a Nobel? Yeah, because regular he Nobel found prize. a good detail. He crossed for a type of wheat that wasn't uh, resistant to disease and increased outputs in a lot of countries. And they still, and it's still a natural plant. Yeah. And I'm wondering why you, he should be arrested for he died for giving it for giving an answer to a, a world population problems. He invented yeah. GMOs. Yeah, he 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 progressed. He propagated Roundup to every country in the world, and and made these chemical companies very rich. And, and all how their, many people have died eating it, GMOs? Well, it, the other things that it makes it hard for the farmers to no longer. How many people are in hospital because we don't GMOs. know, Charlie? It's impossible to find out. Well, then we, it agriculture is, is a science, man. We know it's bad. We know, we know, we know that it. we know that spreading Roundup is not healthy. We know that Roundup is not a good thing. You have not shown that. They wouldn't be paying off these lawsuits if it was him, right? It was you know, why are they paying off? Yeah, they should we, be stopped. It should listen be to Ellen. What did Ellen just say? Respond to Ellen. I would not listen to Ellen. Why, well, why are should. they, why are they- Why, are, why is million, Bayer keeping billion. $11 billion for court cases? Is it just- Yeah, civil you know, they, they, you know, they explain what these court right. cases are for. For injury, no. for they cancer, causing yeah. cancer. To farm, to farm workers. They no, no, uh, no, not farm workers. No. For janitor, it's there's a eat, you know? Johnson, Dwayne Johnson was a janitor in, in uh, California. School it's an janitor. employee issue. Mm -mm. Yeah, right. He got uh, cancer from Roundup. So he and any substance up, like he this, got 30 and, million. Damn, this thing. Charlie, he got 30 million. million. Also, you know look at about the poison. Charlie, he it's got thirty air. million dollars. It's in the air. I have some jury trials. It, it's in the, the nanobots. That's not science. Why yeah, is Bayer? Why is Bayer? Why is Bayer saving a billion, eleven billion? Do you have any science or not? Do yes, I have it? No, but Bayer has it. There's no attorneys have it. Yes, they, yes, they do. They save the eleven billion dollars. Look at John Kirby on Kim Trails, Kim Trails and um, Elena Friedman. We the have nine nanobots caused fires. They they manufacture the our destruction. That's why they call it seeds of destruction. But the, it's in the air we breathe. The Kim Trails. Why are they spreading aluminum in the air? And they they say the the. The vaccine, I mean, the virus it could be airborne, right? The military develops these things. Agent Orange, all the people that were killed with that. And, it, you know, they've got millions of lawyers and lobbyists fighting these lawsuits. But, but the, you know, the evidence is there. What, 8 billion people managed to win. And watch that movie, Dark Waters, you know, what the cows end up. And it, this is the Ohio River. Everybody who drinks out of that Ohio River, that goes across the whole country to Chicago, practically, should be getting billions of dollars for the for the cancer. But they, there's evidence that show their cancer didn't, we didn't have nearly the rate of cancer or, you know, infections right, or anything right. until cancer, recently. Two it's out been of five. by our food, our environment, 40. our things. 40% of people get cancer. Oh, everybody gets cancer. It's so normal. They're you know, so happy. Yeah. Well, we don't need it. We don't need cancer. It doesn't mean it has to be that way. Yeah. The, it's just the companies are you protected have to by their lawyers and in denial. Like burden. You have to, you, wait a minute. You gave a fact, but you haven't established anything. It's called causality, pal. Have you ever <laughs> hey, heard of this? Pal. Okay. Are you? 
correlation okay. is causation. Correlation. Look at the correlation. Look at the correlation. Why is everybody that saying, why is Bayer saving a eleven billion dollars? A lot more people are watching movies. You're not answering <laughs> the question. I mean, you. The burden is provocateur. on provocateur. You. You're an agent provocateur. You got no, no causality. No. I'm trying to cast yeah. doubt yeah. um, on everybody. Yeah. Let's get some more people in here, Bob. What do you think about all this stuff? Very interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm all ears. What? I said, you I'm all ears. Okay. And Jim, I didn't catch your comment. You want to start when we're going to start meeting in person soon? So it's obviously uh, why like so much GMO. And this is said because, okay, some farmers, they're really afraid there's going to be not enough food for the public, you know. So that's why they put more pesticides and not like it was even 45 years ago in Russia, I remember. Food was so natural, you know, tomatoes smell like tomato, apples never was like, you know, like waxing cover. Now it's like, no taste. Right. It no was, taste for tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Pretty good taste was in Russia. And, Not here. Ah, <laughs> here. It's a little bit. You're here. Yeah. It's a they little taste bit. pretty bad. No, not, uh, you know. They don't taste. Sometimes you have to, you know, keep tomato in the certain place yeah. to make uh, tomato more, uh, you know, more ripe, you know, more tasty. But apples, special green apples, I don't know why they put so much wax in the skin, you know, in the skin, uh, in the apple skin. Who can? I don't answer? know why. You don't know? No. So who can answer me this question? Bob, Matter, you're smart. Do you know answer why they put so much wax to green apple? Because when you pick up green apple, it's like waxing, you know, like you need to take off skin to eat apple and washing with, you know, right? These with are water. like manufactured, our corporate right. manufactured vegetables. Rather than small farms, they're made, you know, like United Fruit made the bananas, you know, and like killed all the people and, you know, like slave labor. They I hope bananas now. And how they, with, you know, they'll put the cows with the, you know, the milk. I hope, you know, I feed them cement. They, yeah. were, they weren't even, they weren't feeding them grass. They're feeding them like cement to make Corn them. and soybeans. Right, right, right. right. So it, this is the problem with big corporations having right, a right, monopoly yeah. power. I'm not big, right. Little guys aren't there, and there's no regulations, you know, that say, yeah, I, you know, they just fine them, but they don't make. We need antitrust laws too. Because apply. farmers, you know, don't purpose like to sell stuff, right? So they make more profit and in, in, in selling more. Look at this farmer markets. Sometimes, you know, it was like a couple of years ago, farmer markets here was on the one uh, near bank, you know, Republican bank. It was big, nice space. So, you know, they was rushing to come here like 5.30 in a.m. They already was here to sell product. And Apple, I pick up Apple. And it was different than even like health food store, cold food store, it's so different. Look a little bit more natural, yeah. you know, and, right. and eat onion taste. Like onion. Like hybrid apples that they used to taste better, but I think maybe they've gone too far. They, this is supply, not listening to demand. Okay, you yeah. know, economic, they should be, I used yeah. to ask people, what kind of apple do you like? Let's make that one. You know, it's got too much wax. <laughs> well, right that was the <laughs> idea right? <laughs> they don't they don't even care anymore they just are looking for the short-term profit yeah and they're not really meeting the needs of the people the unmet needs for fresh food healthy food they mm -hmm. just you know deny everything this is right. the sad and thing. you know very expensive those i understand they drive you know they drive from very far and farm and but you know sounds like what's wrong with those vegetable stores you know they put so much vaccine to i don't know not they but maybe try to keep fresher food fruit yeah and vegetables. Uh, makes I question. Don't those waxes. All right, go ahead. Maybe Bob has. Okay. I've heard yeah, this um, thing there that 
Yeah, Allegedly, Dan, GMA food doesn't taste as well. And I'm not aware of any study comparing the two. It's, it's the, and the major thing that I discovered it is they have identical nutritional value. Mm. Dan, uh, uh, were you, you aware that people can just go to the hardware store and buy Roundup for their own lawns? Yes, I know. I, I went to the local uh, Home Depot. There's a whole wall of Roundup. I know. What is Roundup? So is that, that give, should we be concerned that, should we be concerned that our neighbors might be putting Roundup on their grass? Or growing your grass and putting them in gliophosphate uh, uh, spraying your lawn with gliophosphate, phosphate, no, no. whatever it is. Their gardens, their gardens. Well, if they do it, use, listen, you, you wouldn't use it on a lawn. It would kill all the grass, Bob. No, no, you. My you gotta my use, listen. Mother you, and you father can only have an application. Goes, no, I'm not putting that on a garden. certain manner. I'm not putting it on my tomatoes, but my father wanted to. He's a man, you know, and but she wouldn't do it and she was smarter, but you know, she's like, you are not putting, you know, poison on our tomatoes, you know, we're not gonna do it. Maybe it'll cut back on the boll weevils or whatever they might get in there. Coli. No, E. coli is poop. That's what gets on it in the grocery store. That's just what shit on the food that, in the grocery listen, store. That's what the E. coli I listen to this guy tell you to it's put that in the on water. the water. That's what E. coli is. I didn't want to say anything, but he's yeah. loony. Mm -hmm. All right. He wants to put E. coli in his garden. It, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I don't want to do that, with, with uh, pesticide. That's a real good idea. Uh, Boy, this tomato tastes uh, real good. I've got a comment. Luke, Luke a has a question. Uh, a or comment, Bob hasn't gotten his comment in. All right, Bob. Go ahead. Okay, so, Dan, if, if somebody wants to use, uh, you know, if somebody wants to use uh, Roundup or the gliophosphate treatment on their lawn, you have to buy, then you have, you have to buy uh, lawn seed, you have to buy genetically modified lawn seed so that when you spray the gliophosphate on there, it won't kill it, doesn't I, kill the grass, it just I guess kills so. the grass. Yes, I guess so. I mean, it will kill it if it's normal seed, if it's regular, if it's GMO, uh, Roundup resistant, then it won't get, it won't die. Right. Yeah. So that's what, yeah. Okay. Cause I just, I was just looking at YouTube. There's a, there's some YouTube videos about using, uh, you know, Roundup and, uh, and that gl gliophosphate on your, on your lawn. And it says right on the front of the, the label of the, of the, of the, of the Roundup stuff, it says, you know, well, kills weeds, not lawn. So, you know uh, what? I, I guess, I guess uh, high breeds those tomato. If you see in the store. Question. You have a question? Yeah. For the speaker? My, yeah. My, my question is for speaker. What do you think about high breed? High. Excuse my English. High breed tomato. Okay. Let me. Can I they answer? Sell, you know, can I answer? different color. It's okay, ridiculous. Can I answer? Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible for the. No, house. I think hybrid is fine no. as long as it's not GMO. Hybrid. All hybrid means is different farmers change the change the way it grows a little bit. That's it, all a it's hybrid really is. Bad. It's artificial. No, it's not bad. Sounds like artificial. No. I don't think like so. Natural. You imagine like hybrid tomatoes? What's up with this? You okay. know, I guess it's it's, it's very bad for the health. Yeah. What's your opinion, guys? All right, I have a question, please. Go ahead. Given Go ahead, you, you began to talk by expressing all this concern for the soil, the soil, we have to preserve the soil. And yet, given by your talk, I would only conclude that you would be opposed to no-till type of farming. No. You cannot engage in no-till farming, given the views, the positions you've taken on many issues. Uh, just the opposite. No-till is the number one method of preserving the soil. It's one method. There's, uh, if you remember the video I showed, in his field, if you saw the field, it was full of green stuff, grass and fescue and 
all kinds of stuff. That's another way of keeping the soil healthy, to grow all kinds of stuff in the field at the same weeds? time. Do you want can to grow I finish, weeds? Char can I, it's, it's not weeds, Charlie. Well, what are they it's growing? Big, they're, they're grasses that propagate microbes and earthworms and uh, exudates. Plants actually, make worms? What? What kind of plant makes worms? They don't make worms, but it'll help worms stay in the soil, which makes air and space for when there's big rains. It gives space for the rain to go, so the flood, the field doesn't flood. So I mean, it's there are a lot drainage, of no man. tilling, drainage. Yeah, we're talking drainage. No yeah, till. Yeah, what are you tell me? There's no drainage. There's no drainage and no-till soil. You don't want drainage. Don't you know how soil, you ever heard? Hey, it's called erosion. You're smart, Charlie. But uh, <laughs> no-till is good, but it's only one, one trick in the bag of things that Gabe Brown does. No-till is don't till your soil just because you should till it to get rid of weeds. You keep the weeds in the ground, and then you need people to, to take the weeds out. And then you put the green stuff back in the soil and you feed the soil green stuff, which makes uh, the earthworms healthy, which makes the soil healthy, and which, do, which makes fertilizer not necessary, artificial fertilizer necessary. And also all that green stuff growing in the field, it, it keeps away pest, pests naturally. It'll, the, the bees will eat the little pests, the worms will eat the pests, the grasshoppers will eat the pests. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. a natural field and that's what Gabe Brown was talking about. Mm -hmm. A lot of different methods. Right, is that organic farming? Is that what, what organic yeah. farming is basically? I think so, yeah. 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 Rodale does it, yeah. They're big on it. Mm-hmm. That big little farm really is something everybody ought to see because it at first you're like, it, you know, they're skeptical, but they follow the instructions of an expert applying this kind of cycle of nature and, um, you know, they you see the wolves and, <laughs> you know, it, it's weird. Right, how right. Works, and so. and they, let, they let the pigs and chickens and cows in the field to use their manure for fertilizer. And that's very, and they, they move the cows from field to field. So maybe two or three days in one space, two or three days in another, so that their manure is spread out. And they use it. Dan, yeah. Dan, I worked on a dairy farm. We Good for 50 you. Cows. You, think, well, you know what would happen? We what? let 50 cows loose in the corn. Are you, is that what you're recommending? No. Yes. Maybe <laughs> they're not going to eat the corn. They'll eat the yeah, grass. They're, they're not old McDonald. That's for sure. Corn oil is like. Ugh, and you want to let bad. the cows loose no, in the no, corn? No. Not in the it's corn, but in a field, <laughs> in, in a, a field that's not with corn. But it if you're growing, corn, if you're growing corn, you're going to put a lot of green stuff in with the corn, so the corn isn't all by itself. Talking about erosion, remember the Dust Bowl of the 30s? Remember what that was, was erosion. It was tilled ground and the wind took it away and there was clouds of the soil blowing all over America and it blew to Washington, DC. I mean, it was erosion and that's why people went to California because Dad, Oklahoma Dad. was gone. That's why well, they Dad, stopped growing Dad, cotton said, in Georgia. Dad, they couldn't do it I, after a while. No more slaves, no more cotton, because they couldn't, it was, the soil was all, you know, over. Worn out. Yeah. Worn out. Dad, Dad if, you're, if, you, if you let the cows out in a garden, it would eat it down so that when you return, okay, it then, would look like earth. Okay. You would not even know there were plants there. <laughs> but you need cows in, in fields the cows where they're will do that. 
They don't eat at need, all. need cows in fields that aren't being grown, Charlie. That don't have produce. In if, them. if the cow, if a cow, if I let a cow loose in your garden, and you came back the next day, you would have bare earth, like in the springtime. I guarantee you. He's okay. not suggesting that. I'm not Dad, suggesting. Hey, so then let the cows loose in the field. No. Uh -huh. it, in a field that's fallow, that's not being grown, but is growing green stuff anyways, at the same time to keep yeah, it healthy. Let Mark right. ask a question. Yeah, and, I, and Bob I, has a question. I want to clear up. You go first, Bob. I just want to clear, clear up. All right, yeah, Bob and then Margaret. Yeah, I just want to clear up. I just want to clear up any confusion I might have caused. I went back and uh, looked at a looked at a website about Roundup. And it turns out that the, the Roundup you use for your lawn is not the same as the Roundup, you, you know, that a farmer would use on crops. The, uh, the, it's a different formulation. The, the Roundup on your lawn for your lawn does not contain uh, glyophosic. Glyphosate. Uh, glyphosate. Chemicals all together that it only, it only kills uh, weeds. Uh, you know, weeds that would appear in your lawn and doesn't kill certain uh, northern grasses. So, so there is a difference. They just, they still call it Roundup, but they just call it Roundup for your lawn. But that's not the same as a Roundup oh. for commercial farmers, which oh. does have the, you know, it, which is glyophosate. Glyphos and uh, then you have to, you and know, the glyphosate. Glyphosate is out of your set. Yeah, exactly. uh, but that's what, yeah, that's what real, real Roundup is. You have to have the GMO seeds I, for so I just wanted to clear that up. Glyphosate is built into the seed. Okay, it's a hybrid seed. It's not good. I don't know of any studies, but they make Roundup ready because they really capture the market on two sides. You know, they got the Roundup seed, and then they got the Roundup ready stuff that works with it, and it basically excludes all the natural organic farmers. You know, Mexicans, they're there's this whole thing about their farms blow over, you know, in Ecuador and uh, these people had collected these seeds for millions of years and the Roundup just takes over like a big monster Frankenstein. So, um, but it's not a good thing, the genetic modified seed. I'm going to check my facts on that too. Right. Yeah, Margaret has a question. Now I have two questions. The first is facetious. Bob, did your kitty cat enjoy that little bit of pizza? she was able to get from you. <laughs> That's remarkable. Mine doesn't care for that, but likes almond butter and one other thing. Uh, I have a question of a more serious nature for Dan. Dan, I was in a, <clears throat> years ago, I was in Midland at a Unitarian church one summer and a woman gave a presentation and I thought she, it's not agriculture, is it called patriculture? Or what is it called? Just exactly what you're talking about. She did not eliminate any weeds. The only thing she ever got rid of would be burrs that, because her children ran through it. She was adding chickens because she said the uh, vegetables love to have the earth stirred up by those little chicken feet. Uh, within three years, it was amazing what she was able to grow on this very small acreage. She brought samples of her work. And she said in some of the countries, they will just farm up on the hills even. Maybe an apple tree will grow. What is that called? It's not agriculture and I can't remember yeah. the name. Was it pac padri agriculture or what? That natural I don't form know. of farming where you don't eliminate, yeah. uh, you don't eliminate anything okay. really. Just and natural farming. It's called organic. Natural. Organic farming? Or no? It could be organic, although I think it's more extreme than organic. You know, in other words, her stuff was organic, but I think it's much more uh, sophisticated, perhaps, or mm -hmm. back to the earth, even than organic. Because uh, it was just to me fascinating that somebody could take a small plot uh, and simply encourage all growth, because in her opinion, all growth was beneficial. It's called uh, regenerative farming. Regenerative. It's regenerative called, farming. What kind? Regenerative. R E G E N E R A. Oh, regenerative farming. The other yeah. thing about sheep manure, sheep manure, I used to buy it 
50 years ago to put on the yard uh, in the first house I owned. And you just buy it at uh, Lowe's, you know, and it's perfectly pure, you know, I mean, I didn't have to have cows running through the yard or sheep, but it's, I did consider it to be beneficial over commercial fertilizers. It does have quite an odor though. <laughs> chicken manure. We used to put that on our lawns too. Chicken manure. Yeah. Um, Way after a while, the smell, right? Can I, can I, uh, I'm an, I'm, I'm an Man, I got a question. Oh, no, uh, uh, no, right, Kevin, did you have a question? Go ahead. Okay, um, it seems to be uh, the general trend of the conversation is anti-GM uh, products. Uh, can I just make the case that um, most of the problems that um, the, the world faced when I was coming of age was world starvation. And GM products have actually pretty much, you know, we, we don't lack food in this world. The only people that are starving in this world at this moment in time because of uh, geo, uh, geopolitics. There's, a, there's more than enough food. That, science was asked the question, can you feed the world? And you know, yes, we can. And it's with GM products. And yes, Big Pharma has made it like a huge amount of money out of this. Well, well, you know, that's, you, I think this thing was, was like air uh, and, and water and, and stuff. And it's, it's, it's more of a, a larger question, how much federal regulation you need on, on this stuff and how much you allow, you use the free market, not let the free market take control, but you use it. Uh, where it's good, it's very, very good. And when it's bad, it's really bad. Uh, if, you if you take, for example, the internet, we've allowed, we've allowed uh, private, private enterprise to, to, you know, to be the, the major controller of the internet. And it's been, it, it brought communication to the entire globe. Um, you have a question? The question is, uh, how how far do you allow private enterprise to take control, and how much do you allow federalization to control private enterprise uh, in, in, well, in, you know, in, in things like air, water, GM crops? That kind of thing. It's it it's it really is that uh, old Western, uh, uh, you know, uh, cliche of the lawless town, the federal marshal, the the 1984 the the, the uh, scenario where everything's controlled and there's there's no innovation. Mm -hmm. It's it is that federal. That's a question. The, how, 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 well, the question is how, how how much do you allow federal control to to I I impact on uh, our business? Uh huh. Well, and, and okay, I, I have a how, question. How, I have how, much, how much you how much you control the free the free market? Free market. How, how much right. you allow the free market. Right. To right. solve problems, right, you know? right, right, right. Okay, thank you, thank you for your question. How many people from the government are now in Monsanto, or how many people from Monsanto are now in the government? Yeah. I mean, and what about crop uh, insurance? What is that? Is that is that welfare for the rich or something? I mean, yeah, I mean. Uh, which is which is federal control over big business. If you say no, no, you can't, you can't do this. You know, you, you divorce big business from government. Right. Well, there's a there's a 
place in the Gulf of Mexico that is dead, that has, that is from all the fertilizer that is taken down the Mississippi River. Now, who's going to clean that up? Or whose fault is that? Is that big business? Or is that the government? Is it the state of Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, uh, Missouri, uh, Louisiana, Texas? I mean, who's well, going to clean uh, that up? Is it who's under, fault under is your, that? Uh, under your, your system, like the people of uh, that were affected by that could sue the, the companies involved, but obviously, you know, um, if it depends, it depends on your level of government and how much that's and how much big business controls that government. Um, another way to look at it would you would have a federal authority that would not allow them to do this, right? Um, like the like the, the European Union. Um, I was so just uh, just before. Uh, sometimes the, the people that you think got the worst of the deal get the better air and the better water. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 for example, you have like a climate change agreement and, and you know, they make special dispensations for India, you know, South Korea, whatever like that, and America and Britain get, get penalised. Oh, well... You're not allowed to shit on your own doorstep as much as everybody else is. Uh, okay. Anyways, there's a good movie, Kiss the Ground, by Josh Tickell. Josh and his wife, Rebecca Tickell. And it's just how about natural farming all around the world and how good it is and how not to use um, pesticide is very healthy. And like Gabe Brown and people at Ray Archuleta, who used to work for the Soil Conservation Service. Well, is, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it possible to feed the world's population? using? No, it's not, population? because Ro Rodale has done tests that the same amount of crop gets pre uh, grown with non-pesticide as with pesticide. So you don't need pesticide. It's a, it's a myth that pesticide helps and GMOs are necessary. It's just a big myth. And people, a very small minority, a tiny minority are gonna go against the grain and, and not gonna use pesticide because the chemical companies, you know, they, they own the farm bureaus, they own the USDA, they own the land grant universities with all the agriculture departments. And so, you know, it's hard to change way, the way people think. People think and way. organic and conventional farming are different. Why do you keep asserting that they're the same? What? Otherwise, then you, there'd be identical cost, price. They're Should not go the to same. Every factor in an economy, you've got to look at the ecosystem. You've got to look at the people, the prices. Steve, listen. He's but maintaining. It's he says worth over it. Over it's worth it because you don't pay they're for not doctors. They're not identical. They're not identical. You're right. They're not. Absolutely. They're categorically different methods. This is interesting. Isn't right. It? And one of them is quite expensive. Well, there's a plus my will. And right. You could, grow, you could grow corn in a flower pot and it'd be organic, but how much would your corn cost? It, it's the corn that's the problem with the big farmers and the bold weevils and the round. Dave Brown, wait, if you look, watch the video, if you watch the video, people are making the same amount of money or more. No, I don't, I, I don't watch any videos. If, I, if you can't articulate it, forget it. I don't watch any stupid. It's better if you grow corn in your garden, it tastes better. You know, but I wouldn't put pesticide on the uh, corn. Oh, I'll give it back to you. Right? It's delicious, right out of the ground, right? Yeah, it yeah. really is good. Right, right. Okay. Uh, okay. It's All right, Calvin stuff. has another it's question. Then yeah, yeah, we got to yeah. go to. Oh, Luke had a question. I don't know. Somebody's rebuttal. talking on the phone or something. But <laughs> I wanted to suggest um, the movie Minari is very inspiring about the Korean little family. It won the Academy Award last year um, for best movie. And here, Luke has a question. Yeah. Um, hi, Dan. Nice uh, presentation. Dan, um, my family 
my father and uh, his family, my uncles and aunts and cousins, uh, they grew up on a farm. And uh, my father on a farm in the 1920s in Iowa. Wow. And uh, they went through the depression. My father worked on the farm as a, a kid and, and they came to Chicago. So, um, and um, I asked him about, I asked him about the- Kelvin, can you mute? Can you mute Kelvin? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I asked my, my, my father when the environmental movement, let's say was starting in the sixties. And I asked him about the, uh, you know, Rachel Carson and all that in the pet. And he said, you know, after we got electricity in the house, you know, they got a light bulb in the middle of the living room and they got electricity, he said, uh, uh, probably the greatest advancement was when we got the uh, chemicals, the uh, pesticides, uh, because uh, it increased the yield per acre tremendously. So they became much more, much more um, productive and profitable. So that's that's really where the the industry kind of started. I don't disagree that it, it you know the chemicals are bad or anything. But I guess my question is this: is, Do you see a, a a place for chemicals or pesticides in modern agriculture, or should they just all be absolutely banned? I mean, I I, I or, or non uh, you not used at all. I I think that's a good question. I think they should be weaned off of it. I think because it it just uh, it's just better to use natural methods and horse manure and cow manure. And I understand that it's very expensive. And actually, farmers have to use more and more because uh, plant weeds become super weeds. And go again, and can be, and can grow, even with Roundup, and so they need more Roundup and more per acre, so it becomes very expensive. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, farmers today, by the way, and I've still got uh, relatives out in Iowa that farm. Farmers today are the most subsidized. <laughs> the most the wealthiest group they yeah. are always complaining always complaining about everything but they're very very wealthy people and they've got more government programs more help than any group in, in, in the country right well that's the lucky one well or the rich ones you 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 don't hear about the 500 farmers who quit every every month because they run they don't have they can't make money I mean, or their farms are the land is the land is dead because of too much pesticide. I mean, uh, they sell out to suburban developers, or they sell out to suburban developers, right? But they yeah. quit farming, right? Which is the important part. Yeah, and you're, you're lucky. Your no you're lucky. Your relatives that. are. You don't know anything about federal they're, farming. They're a min they're a minority, I think, very small minority who get Not most of all. the money. Who get most of the money? Yeah, corporate farmers are rich, but small farmers are not rich, and they a not lot of them it. quit. Oh, nonsense! I, I don't know the statistics on that. I'll I'll take your word for it. I mean, yeah. big agriculture, big pharma. Big I know one thing: the farmers that I that I've met, uh, my cousins out in Iowa, I'll tell you, to to sell land is like you know, the greatest sin you could ever commit. I mean, you know, you never sell your land. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you, it's, it's like you hold on to it, give it to your kid, uh, you keep it in the family. I mean, they, are your relatives still using a lot of pesticide? You know, they're in a group that's called Top Farmer, uh, which is a top farming group in the, in, and uh, uh, I don't know if they're still using, they, they use, the most modern forms of agriculture. And I'm not promoting, look, I'll tell you something. My cousin told me that when, and there's, this is industrial farming now. My cousin told me when, when uh, uh, Campbell's came in into the county with a, a deal for all the, uh, all the farmers and uh, they'd loan them the money to build the, uh, at, at nothing interest rates to build the, 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 the hatches on their farms, the, 
the big houses and and uh, to to, uh, to and give them all the loans for the seed to raise chickens. And you know they built these huge um, chicken um, operations on their farms. Uh, my uh. cousin was one, and um, he said uh, the chickens their legs never saw never felt the dirt. I mean, it was just like an assembly operation. And then he sold the chickens to Campbell's and it was like a 10 year contract operation. They did very well with it. They made a lot of money, but I thought, you, you know, I thought it was, a, I thought it was a, 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 when I got that image of thousands and millions of chickens, never even their feet, never hitting the ground. I thought, you know, what a, what a horrible uh, operation. So oh, you the yeah. That's where the hormones come in, I think. Um, to make them bigger, you know, with which affects the the but, sexuality. But the, 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 the personal challenge I have is like when I uh, saw Tim with that with that hot dog and French fries. <laughs> I, uh, I want to know where he bought that, where where I can go and get it. Eden and Jutes like, and River Grove. It's not good for me. It's not good for me. It's good for Tim, but it's not good for me. <laughs> okay, Ellen, how do you make a hormone? Bad. Don't let's pay her. Go to, let's go to uh, yeah. rebuttals, Tim. Good question. You know, you, 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 didn't, you didn't get it, did you? Let's How do you go to rebuttals. How do you make a hormone? Oh, right. yeah, let's here. go to rebuttals. <laughs> you're, 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 you're what are rebuttals? Down. Don't come down the college. <laughs> don't How do you make a hormone? Ask her to convert currency. Okay, we'll go to. We'll go I, to uh, rebuttals now. Rebuttal. All right. Who wants to do rebuttals? I, I know did. Ellen's chomping at the bit. And I also know that Charlie is going. Bob, you got one, I take it, I hope? Just a little bit. Okay. And who else? Uh, Sharon, Kevin, you guys want to do anything? Vicki? Okay. This is Sharon. I'm, I'm good. All right, Hi, Sharon. Sharon. Kevin, you want to do anything or not? Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, it's you talk. Yeah. I can only, you were talking about like air and water and uh, pollution and stuff, right? Yes. Um, and I've watched uh, various uh, corporate interests destroy. Okay. One of the best. Yeah. Okay, um, Kevin. What we're doing right now is getting rebuttals going. We're uh, going to give well, us a I, I watch corporate interests okay. and media interests destroy okay. one of the best environmental protections I, as a UK citizen, ever had, right? Okay. Um, when I was growing up. Okay, Kevin, uh, Kelvin, Kelvin, right now we're doing rebuttals. Just let, him, want... let him talk then. Let him okay, talk. then we'll okay, give you, we'll I, give when you, I was, when I was give you five up, minutes, I, Kevin. When, I was, when I was growing up, right? We, the, the, the Merseyside Shore, right, the, where, where the beach was where I used to play, right, had an open sewer pipe right into the bay, right? We joined the Economic Union, the, the, the European Union, and they, they, they became like a whole band. It was like you had to classify beaches. This beach wasn't safe. That beach wasn't safe. Okay, this is where I was growing up in Liverpool. This was also the case in Blackpool, which was like the Coney Island, right, of uh, where we grew up, grew, grew up. Blackpool had, you said, you know, you wouldn't swim on the beach in, Liverpool, in Blackpool. You just went through the motions, right? It, there was literally shit on the, on the beach. Right, polio. You know, it was a, it was an open, open. The European Union said, "No, you can't. You can't have people. This is not a beach where people can play." That yeah, that federalized federalized um, constraints. I've now watched the Brexit and the Murdoch press. Campaign for us to go, oh no, we don't need this regulation. Kind of crap. And, and, and throw a whole lot of xenophobia as well in there, just to spice it up, get everybody on board. 
and you lose that regulation because okay. Uh, yeah, good regulations, good federalizations. A government you can trust, it will be an idea. Sorry, that was my little rant. Can I go? Um, yeah, all cool. right. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, Ellen, five right, minutes. Ellen. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with Kelvin uh, that, um, you know, regulation, we need to restore right regulation. Uh, they came up with this idea of, you know, deregulation and with the neocons in the 80s after William Casey, the CIA, Nixon, OSS stole the election from Carter with by trading uh, arms to Iran and uh, trading for the drugs. And, you know, so the problem is, you know, it sounded okay. Yeah, lo less regulation, that'll be good for everybody. But it, the problem is what we got instead is a government monopoly, uh, an invisible government monopoly, which is basically corporate government, which is fascism, you know, and um, they are, they don't care. They're uh, Nazi fascists, I think, just like Putin says they are in the Ukraine. And um, we're kind of going through, we went through the Cold War, now we're in the Fourth Reich, the Fourth World War. Um, but it, and, you know, I think the decision, the way the soil is, is because the, um, you know, look at war and look, World War II and World War One. what did that do for the soil? You know, let's just bomb it. And, um, you know, the nuclear war, that we, there's a pathological mentality, uh, you know, at feudalism at the very top, a totalitarian takeover that, that really doesn't care. It, it's what's scary is when you had Hitler, he, um, you knew that who he was and you could see him. Now the, it's like the invisible man's there. I'm, I've got here, you know, Hannah Arendt, John, you and, or, and I, um, Dan, you and I talked about Hannah Arendt and um, I, it was too hard to read, you know, but now that I'm looking at Putin and trying to, or, you know, stop this, another war uh, and against Putin, which is just totally manufactured propaganda. America does democracy, just like, you know, we came up with the little anthrax and go into Iraq I was like, where did that come from? Um, they're, they're manufactured. Uh, it's a war crime, but you can't get anybody to, if it's not in the media and nobody knows it, nobody agrees with you, it, you know, um, but it, you know, the, what you talked about, I mean, this is biological warfare, chemical warfare, nuclear warfare are, I've got this book here, the America's Achilles heel, because that's where all the innovation is. I mean, it, you know, I got my MBA thinking, oh, we'll listen to the unmet needs and we'll meet the needs of the market. I just like, what happened to that? It's, um, you know, we just, we make driverless cars, you know, when there's no demand for it, right? Or um, Area 51, or they make bio warfare that they can put on the tip of the missile and, um, you know, get mutually assured destruction, um, you know, and uh, get the population down to uh. half a million, you know, and it, it, but nobody uh. believes you because of the censorship, which is, you know, um, the biggest problem. And I mean, you, you know, and the fact that YouTube and Google and- uh, You know what, you know, the biggest, well, bloody, well, the biggest bloody mess in the world right this moment in time. It is, is fucking censorship. Everybody I, that ever I ever heard talk about censorship has had far more, uh, you know, far more publicity than people who say you know just tell, telling the bloody truth. Oh yeah. It no, is. no. If you want to, you want to talk about censorship. You want to talk about censorship. I've got a friend who grew up in East Germany where Tigger was airbrushed from Winnie the Pooh. Oh. You're right, but this. We were talking the other night, uh, 
No, 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 you, no, no, you, no, you, you, you can look on, at Kevin. the most yeah. extreme porn you want. You know, there's nothing censored in, in, in Western society. Everything's censored, um, but you can't the word you can't say the word virus in America on any media. You are deplatformed. Three million uh, Chinese people wanted to invest. No, 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 you can say virus. The bio warfare want. There. I want to say this, Kevin. Just give me a break, and then we can it's talk. It's Kelvin, about. by the way. I was Kelvin, after right. a scientist. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, but because I lost my, but Dan, I was so happy. I'm going to get back to you, Dan, and that. All my attempts to talk about the virus and it was made at Fort Detrick and it, they, they make AIDS, they make Lyme disease, they make these bio warfare. And that's how I've learned about genetic engineering and nanotechnology. And there are nanobots making these fires in California, but it's hard to get the government or the insurance companies, they won't admit it. They're, they've got paid lobbyists. But thankfully, Dan you not, you, sent me a message. Kelvin, have, have you not read about, about the KGB's uh, most successful? Uh, Can you wait, most, Kelvin? One Mute of the most Kelvin, successful okay. misinformation. Can you move him, one of the KGB's most successful oh, misinformation campaigns. He's just doing what you do, Ellen. That's all. Okay. Okay. Um, I wanted to thank Dan for sending me organic. Farming magazine. I think there was an article, the only one I've seen that that says, you know, that it's you send out and get people to sign the petition to stop manufacturing bio warfare according to the treaties that we've signed with, um, you know, all. Actually, John Bolton got us out of them in 2006, but we make vaccine, we make the virus so we can make the vaccine countermeasures on the assumption that Russia is going to make them. And so we know how to fight them, but we make them and we, we all make them, but they, we need to be, have to tell us each other this, we made it. And then this whole thing goes away. But the military has their code of silence and it goes back Ellen, to Ellen, have you, have you and not England. Read up to the actual. The KGB actually admitted yeah. that, they, that, that they they spread the lie that America uh, developed AIDS. Yeah, well, I don't know, but no, um, no, the, the, no the, the, after the after the wall came down, and they had to like you know, it, you can go to the KGB oh, yeah. museum yeah, KGB in Moscow. And, well, you can't right, and used to FBI go to the and, 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 and they, they, they admitted that this is a you music. know this was. This was the kind of lie that, um, you know, yeah. carrots are good for your eyes. You ever heard they're the, like, the, carrots are good for your eyes? What? No, I haven't, but uh, we got to. You know, gotta carrots get... are good for your eyes. Okay. Anyhow. Um, you know, yeah. you know okay. why, do you know, to, you know, what, you know why people to... think carrots are good for their, your eyes? Ellen, you know. No, I'll tell you why people think carrots are good for your okay, eyes. Okay, Kevin, so, Kevin. Do, during the Second World War, the, the, we had the, the, the Britain had radar, and we were intercepting the German fighters and the German bombers more than we should do, right? Right. So we spread this rumor that we that we fed British fighter pilots on carrots, which were good for your eyes. Okay. And that's okay. the reason why we were we, we, we shot down more German bombers than we should do, right? And All right, the Kelvin. 80s, when, it, when AIDS came out, All right, the KGB Kelvin. spread misinformation, and it's all documented that America. Well, okay, was Kelvin. AIDS. Okay, Kelvin. You now are. You just Ellen's time's now up. I'm going to let the. Uh, it's rebuttal period, so each and everybody gets a chance to speak. So, uh, Bob. Well, I just had that rebuttal period, so I'll shut up. <clears throat> okay. All right, Bob. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I just want to uh, mention to Dan that the last time uh, he gave a presentation, it was about sugar, and uh, I had been, I had stopped drinking soft drinks for a long time then, probably a couple of years, and uh, had lost uh, quite a bit of weight. But I'll tell you that the 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 the, the photos Dan showed. Of these Mexicans out there swigging that ice cold Coke in the in the hot <laughs> summer, in the hot sun, they're out in the desert. 
that just looked so damn good that a few days later I had to go get a Coke. And I'll tell you, it was so good. That was my favorite drink. And uh, pretty soon I start buying another Coke and another Coke and another Coke. Pretty soon I'm buying a Coke every day when I get on the train to go home. And they also have, uh, uh, well, besides regular Coke, now they got cherry Coke and they got some, something new that I really like, vanilla Coke, but they're hard to find. But uh, yesterday I actually had two Cokes. So uh, Dan has really got me back on the, uh, on the sugar wagon again. Thanks, Dan. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Um, let's see. I think about, uh, I always uh, used to say, uh, you know, you can always tell the difference between a, uh, an organic apple and a, uh, and a uh, fertilized raised apple because the organic apples, if you notice, they're always, they're always small and they always have like wormholes in them and stuff. And then your, your, your uh, apples that are made with fertilizer, they're always humongous and perfectly shaped and colored and no wormholes. And just, you know, difference between night and day. It's, it's ironic that, you know, these really beautiful, great, big, perfect apples are about a dollar a pound. <clears throat> and then these organic little tiny apples with wormholes in them are like, you know, five dollars a pound or something like that. Oh. So I think a lot of, I think uh, if you want to make some money, go down, buy yourself a bag of, uh, of uh, good fertilized grown apples and then stick organic for, for a dollar a pound and then stick organic stickers on them. Then go sell them at one of these farmers markets to people who live in Logan Square that have pink hair and you can sell them for like, you know, five, six bucks a pound. Make yourself a few hundred bucks on the weekend. Uh, got, That's uh, Bob, it. Uh, Bob, guys, uh, uh, we were discussing the topic before. All right. Kelvin, before, it's, before it's Bob's turn. Him, just mute him, okay? Just mute him. And then oh, I'm not going to do him. it, but uh, yeah, Kelvin, let's, let's Bob, let Bob finish his rebuttal and then we got okay, go yeah. to go. I'm done. I'm done. All right, Charlie, go ahead and do your rebuttal. Okay, I'd like to thank Dan for putting together his presentation here. And as usual, I'll be eclectic as usual here. Um, we've had many speakers on the topics of GMOs, uh, animal hormones, uh, cancer. We had leading authors of cancer and uh, oncology. Uh, I, I got the number one doctor in the country, as a matter of fact. Um, and on vegans, uh, periodically, uh, my friend Mike, he went by the name Mike the Vegan, uh, Mike the Vegan uh, would speak. So we've had some background on it. Uh, first of all, one, I'm not going to buy into any of these alleged conspiracies or censorship concepts as an explanation. You make assertions and you have no evidence, a uh, scientific-based uh, data to substantiate it. Uh, you maintain complexities which are non-existent as the reason for the lack of evidence. If you don't have evidence, I'd recommend you go back and get some evidence and then come back when you got some. Otherwise, it's not true. Uh, regarding uh, messing with, you know, let's, let's be cool. You're gonna be messing with food. You're gonna destabilize the economy. Um, so, some of these concepts here would do nothing, you know, and spreading things to disturb people's notions of nutrition, which you have no basis for, I don't think is serving any particular purpose or very, very, uh, I'll use the term lazy. You can't be lazy about uh, facts. Um, the, uh, there's always been questions about what the heck is it? Uh, ecological food or organic. And I don't think they've arrived at any definition here, which gives you the depth of this problem here. Well, I've heard some other things here that there's a dead zone. Now there's a, <laughs> there's a million gallons of industrial chemicals and petroleum dumped into the Mississippi River, 
which I think creates a dead zone, yet we were led to believe, I believe, that it was the herbicides and pesticides which were causing it, which is not substantiated by the evidence and just superficially. Um, the farm policy of the United States, since actually it began uh, with the end of World War I, uh, with, with the high prices of agricultural products to preserve the family farm. The notion that, yes, agribusiness is making money, yet the policy of the United States government, I won't get into the details of this, I first hand experience, has been to maintain the family farm. And yes, they're, uh, they do control Congress and policies in this regard. It's a little difficult to argue to maintain family operations when you can put a guy on a tractor, set him in one direction for eight hours and he doesn't turn uh, to say that you need these small scale operations. There's another reason for that. Um, there's a little bit of the story there. The, the farm processors like to uh, have the farmers maintain the infrastructure and worry about that and they just deal with the product that comes out of it. So there's a gimmickry behind that. So we don't have time for that. Uh, there's been no evidence to date that GMOs are in any fashion harmful to you. Uh, no studies have substantiated that. Now regarding animal hormones, I'm not precisely certain, um, but even that regard, there has not been evidence uh, to the effect, such as in milk, that it was harmful to the consumption by humans of the product. Uh, you, you have to realize how plants work. Does the do chemicals enter through the root system or through the produce? Uh, that's not been established that herbicides and pesticides naturally get through the, the overtake the plant now, there may be certain crops, such as the strawberry, which are susceptible to spraying, but other plants it doesn't, and it does not enter the, pro the produce. Uh, I'll just summarize it at that. There's been some significant development in scientific farming, most notably in the growing of rice. The people don't realize Southeast Asian countries are net exporters of rice. You can get three, three, sometimes four crops per year of rice. And they've got more rice than they know what to do with. This yeah. super rice uh, actually came out of the States, Louisiana. Yeah. Um, they've got more rice than they know what to do with. Uh, another thing is corn, putting down scientific agriculture. This is amazing. As long as corn has been around, every year, the yield of corn increases on average by two bushels per acre, which is amazing. Um, like that. Now, the other side of the coin is people are so worried about hormones, yet they're <laughs> lining up to take envermectin. <laughs> this is like hormones for horses. And they're claiming it's a cure for COVID, which I I've never really understand. Now, one reason I'm suspect of videos when I was in graduate school, we had the first video camera that home use, so to speak. Uh, today, you can go out and buy a single and reference camera and uh, you've got a video, video top notch, you can make a video. And there's a dime a dozen. So I'm in terms of, oh, watch this video, watch this video. When anybody can make it, uh, anybody can put any kind of do a ditty in a video. Because anybody like me, they can go to a camera shop and then you're a videographer. You don't even, yeah, they use regular SLRs for these things. Um, but that's basically it. Um, thanks, Dan. Uh, good to go over the topic. Um, and as I say, there's a difference between agriculture and a garden plot. Um, and they're not the same activity by any means. Um, anyhow, that's basically it. Thank you very much.
Charles, I totally agree with you. Uh, I did, it's getting right to the point I was saying that science was asked the question, can we feed the, can you feed the world? Oh, the you, know, like, you know, live aid, feed the world. Science answered the question. Uh, all right, Kelvin, it's, I'm going to take my rebuttal now, okay? The thing is, you know, there's a lot more products that agriculture produces. And amongst one of the most natural products are these things. Good, clean tobacco. I'm going to show you from a commercial. I'm going to show you from a commercial in the 1960s how pure and good these things can be. If you know what I'm saying here, I'll share my screen in a minute here. I get my screen share. Listen while I tell you a story, the tale of the Marlboro brand. It came out of Richmond, Virginia one day and spread clear across the land. Anyway, it's organically grown. It's a good. Uh, it's a good um, thing. No, it wasn't. You know, and uh, no, 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 no. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. Like, if you want to smoke, if you want to smoke like organic. Tobacco, do you need something like well? Uh, I know about the British brands, Pueblo and um, Pueblo, and uh, uh, there's, 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 there's like a couple of brands that are organic. The fact is, Marlboro stuck ammonia in the cigarettes to freebase it so it hit your brain quicker. Is it that the whole idea for smoking is for the nicotine high? Yeah, no, it wasn't. Yeah, but it's not just tobacco, man. They're putting chemicals as well in them cigarettes to, to, to give you a, a, a faster shoot. You do, you're not doing Charlie. You're doing crack. <laughs> well, um, Tim, that video had nothing to do with growing. The well, the thing, the thing is, you got to grow. You got to commercial. You got to grow tobacco to make a good cigarette. You and didn't have anything yeah, in the but you don't have to put, about don't have to farming put sulfur. The problem to put is, is that I think the reason why organic food okay, no, hasn't no, caught no, on okay, is because okay, of marketing. Okay, okay. I've just put tobacco in my pipe before, right? I'm going right. to have to relight it now because it's gone out, right? Okay. The reason why it's gone out yeah. is because it hasn't got sulfur in it like your Marlboro has to keep it alight. Okay. So you're smoking sulfur. You're smoking ammonia to freebase it. You're smoking silos to bulk it out. You ain't just smoking tobacco, man. I know that, but it's marketed well and I like the taste. So why shouldn't I be able to buy it then? That's what Yeah, okay, but me. well what yeah, but why can't you give me a, a list of ingredients on the pack? This, this product, I mean, this is what gets me, right? I mean, I live in a world of regulation. Okay, you, you know, you buy a bottle of orange juice from the shop and it's got everything that orange juice contains, it, added sugar, preservatives, whatever, yeah? You buy a bottle of booze to go with that orange juice, a bottle of vodka, and there's nothing. They can make that alcohol out of it. Um, Frack. Fracked gas. Tim, could I add something to my rebuttal? Go ahead, Charlie. One sentence. It was mentioned. As a matter of fact, during the week, I wrote about growing carrots, which amazingly enough in nature come in all varieties of colors, but they bred it to be orange. And I'm, it has actually, it is good for your eyes, and it contains vitamin A. 
uh, which precludes cataracts. So yes, carrots are very good uh, to have a root. Yes, it's, uh, it's amazing how this information. Okay. Carry on. All right, uh, I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna thank you for having me, Charlie. Uh, uh, who was the one that that talked about sugar? What? Who was the guy who talked about sugar? I did. I talked about sugar. Can I talk to you a little bit before about sugar before you go up? You get off. Yeah. What we'll All do right. is we can let's let's let let them wrap up the college first. We'll shut off the recording and then we'll keep the Zoom call open. Yeah. All right. Thanks for. Okay. Having I'd me. like to talk to you about sugar before we go. Okay. Go All right. After, uh, thank you for having me, and uh, I learned a lot, and thank you, and good night. Okay, and this will conclude the College of Complexes. We'll see you, everybody, and uh, stick around for the, what we call the after party. So, again, we're going to stop the recording now, and thanks, everybody, for attending.